community. Who knows what NFS is and who has ever used NFS root for developing on a target? Uh, so many old men here. <laughs> yeah, so um, I hope you still have some brain capacity um, and I'm fully tired. I'm a bit tired, but we think I think we can manage it. So the today's topic is quick development cycles with NFS root, a prototype tool. So a very short overview of uh, what you're going to hear. So first of all, I tell a bit about the motivation, the background, why do I have or why do I try to solve a problem here? Then it's always good to look at, okay, if there is a problem, are there already existing solutions out there? So you don't want to reinvent the wheel. And um, then the next thing is uh, I show a prototype tool because yeah, I haven't found a solution that fully meets the requirements here. And in the end, uh, I will talk a bit about future work and yeah, depending on how forced I am, we will still have uh, some time for discussion. So let's shortly set up my timer here. So, uh, short notes, not about me, but the company I work at. It's Penguatronics, for those who don't know it. It's an embedded Linux consulting company founded in 2001. And yeah, we do Linux development integration for our customers, so all around the Linux stack. So from the kernel over uh, graphic, graphic subsystem, integration, testing, updating. So yeah, we cover almost everything up to the application level, which is normally what our customers do. Pangotronics also maintains a couple of open source uh, software like uh, the PDX disk build system, which I will come back to in a few slides. The RAUC update framework, which is also a Yocto layer called MetaRAUC that I maintain. And uh, we also have a bootloader called Bearbox and a hardware abstraction tool for testing that is called LabGrid. And yeah, our Developers also work on many different other open source uh, software contributing and so on. So who is this talk for? So if you find yourself on the left side, so if you use uh, Yocto BSP as your cross build tool, just have an application ready that you've developed and just update your recipe with, your, um, with the application that you've just released, push it to the CI, grab a very large coffee or go home, and on the next, time, the next day you'd use the result, then this talk is probably not that interesting for you. Um, if you find yourself on the right side, so you're actively working with Yocto, you modify your, a code, a recipe, build the recipe, deploy it on the target, test it on the target, see it's not working, repeat and repeat and repeat, then this is probably most uh, interesting for you. So the goal here is to share our developing experience with the Yocto project for these iterations, our quick iteration cycles. And yeah, also maybe later in the discussion collect other developers' experience or what alternatives possibly are there. I want to present a solution prototype and yeah, maybe later discuss if this is an appropriate solution to the problem. As I promised, a bit on the background. So the standard workflow when uh, changing a recipe or a package is you modify it, modify the code or modify uh, the recipe metadata, and then you generate a full image. You do bit bake, for example, core image base, and you wait until the full image is, bait, uh, is bit baked, then you copy the image to the target, and then you test your changes. So this is, this always requires rebuilding the full image and it's not the quickest if you want to have quick development cycles because you have to wait until the image is built and you have to wait until it's uh, deployed to the target uh, file system or the target uh, underlying storage, which can be quite slow. And when we come to the Pangotronics use case uh, where we heavily develop on graphics, on graphic drivers, on graphic infrastructure all across the stack, uh, then this becomes even more severe. So if we, for example, develop on such a uh, piece of software like Mesa, then we have a lot of 
quite uh, big components like the Chromium, and Ross has shown you what happens when building Chromium on a laptop, um, that depend on it. That means if you change Mesa and do a full image build, it will take quite a long time. So this is n quite not optimal when you want to do quick development cycles and test your Mesa changes, your GStreamer changes, and all the software stack above it needs to be rebuilt each time. So a bit from our background, as I already noted, we have a build tool uh, similar to what Yocta is. It's called PDXs that we've been maintaining for uh, several years now. It's a bit quite monotonic or a more monotonic approach compared to Yocto. But what we have there or what our developers are used to is an NFS root workflow. That means with PDXs you can easily set up an NFS root server, a user space server, and then you can mount the target uh, files or mount the host file system from your target. Um, either fully booting uh, from an NFS like we here do with uh, the bootloader that supports it, or you can also just uh, let your root file system of your target come from the NFS mount on your host computer. And now testing changes is quite quick because you can modify a recipe. You can, in PDX, just build the recipe and it instantly updates the content in the shared root file system. And so you can just build Mesa. And it's, yeah, just replaced in place. And yeah, it allows you to quickly test and change things. And using NFS root also has other advantages. As you've seen, you have a mount in your host uh, file system. That means that you can directly uh, directly access the files that your target uses from your host file system. For example, if you want to copy a video for testing to your target, then you just copy it to the root file system on your host and it's available on the target. And the other way around, if you edited something on the target, you made the etc fs tab working, then you can just uh, grab it from the host file system of your computer. Or for analyzing or reading large log files, like coming back to the graphics example for GStreamer, which produces huge logs, you can uh, directly use graphical tools or anything on your host system to read the logs from the target without having to copy it. So the question that came up again and again and again on at Pangotronics was, can't we do this with Yocto? And the quest, the answer to this was normally, yeah, that's not really how Yocto works with dependency handling and uh, state and uh, keeping all this in a reproducible manner and doing the image generation at the very last step. So the first look I had was at existing alternatives in Open Embedded and yeah, we also have heard about uh, the DevTool workflow uh, a couple of times today. So what I can do with DevTool is I can say DevTool modify, then it will create an append and unpack the source in the workspace. I can change the code there and build the code. And what I also can do is then deploy it to the target via SSH. So this at least allows me to change a distinct piece of software and up, uh, upload it to the target without having to rebuild the entire root file system. But yeah, it requires SSH to be configured on the target. It uh, does not handle dependencies. So when I uh, rebuild or change something in an underlying recipe and want everything to be rebuilt until a certain point, then this is not possibly automatically. And it's only for recipes, so I can't exchange files or information like in the graphic I've shown before. Uh, another, yeah, more or less hack that allows me to change things uh, but not trigger a full root file system or not a full rebuild of the dependent packages is uh, the SIGGEN excludes, uh, excludes recipe RB safe, where I can specify some bitbag recipes where I say, okay, when they change this, they don't change any RB, so they don't, re don't require layers uh, or recipes that depend on them to rebuild. But I have to take care if I actually change the RB and uh, 
yeah, forget to remove it, yeah, then um, this won't rebuild and uh, the RB will break during runtime then. So what is required to bring NFS root support into Yocto? Is that possible? So what kind of existing puzzle pieces do we have when we look into Yocto? So what I found is the uh, user space NFS uh, server as a native rest or as a recipe. So this is the first piece that allows us to set up an NFS server on your host machine. And I've also found the uh, script run QML extract SDK. They're a bit hidden because there's nothing about NFS in it, but it's meant for the purpose. That's more or less just for extracting your tar archive of your build root file system to a certain directory, but with using pseudo. And this allows to preserve the information about uh, file ownership, file permissions later on. I'll come back to pseudo a bit later. And then there is the second helper uh, script that's called run QMA export rootfs, which allows us to s uh, start on this exported directory, a user space NFS server, also using the already existing pseudo database that we've unpacked before. So we have basic NFS root support in Yocto, a bit hidden, but it's there, but it's quite static. It does not allow updating, so we can't change a package and update it live. So yeah, the high level approach of what we ha want to have is basically what I've shown with PDX just before. So I want to modify any recipe and rebuild it and then have the updated recipe in the root file system. So this is really not how uh, Yocto or how Bitbake behaves normally. When I do Bitbake, my package is just update the package, so the root file system is not updated. Um, so yeah, is it fully incompatible with how OE works or is there any chance to resolve this? So the idea we had was to use these extracted root file system and the scripts existing to extract the root file system and then update this existing root file system with uh, package feed and with yeah more or less offline updates from externally. So what is already existing in Yocto OE Bitbake to support this? We have the image feature package management, which basically enables uh, package management on the root file system. So it's meant for live updates on the target, but we use it now for offline updates of an existing root file system. And what it basically just does is preserving the package manager information. So when I want to add new packages, upgrade packages, I need to know which packages in which versions have been before on the target. So I have to preserve this information from the root file generation step. And then I use the uh, deploy, the package deploy um, directory, which is temp deploy IPK or temp deploy RPM, depending on what package manager you've just used and use this as a package feed. So there's again support built into Bitbake um, for using this as a package feed. There's a Bitbake uh, package index task there. So yeah, if I change the recipes, call Bitbake recipe and then call Bitbake package index, then it updates the package feed information um, for this package. So I have everything available there for doing offline updates from this package feed then. Another problem that you're gonna face then is, okay, if I change a recipe, then it does not automatically change the recipe's version. But yeah, there's of course, again, a solution already for this, which is the PR server, which is more or less a small server with a database that uh, yeah, tracks for each package what was the last version of it, and it adds its own monotonically incremented version piece, so like dot number. So every time I build a new package, the PR server adds to the PR part of the uh, package version an increasing number. So that which with each change, I increase the package version, and when I do live updates from this package feed, then the package man manager sees, okay, there is a new package that I can update from. And yeah, I've already shortly noticed this 
is uh, pseudo. Pseudo is uh, more or less yeah the known fake root uh, implementation of Yocto, but with an important difference, it uh, has state. It has a database that uh, tracks the inodes that it's uh, created and tracks which permissions or which user uh, they had under the pseudo extract. So I can uh, say, okay, this, this was a root directory first, and when I enter a pseudo environment, it reads the database. But it does strict persistency checks, so I can't just uh, modify a pseudo maintained directory from a non pseudo environment, then you get these uh, well known pseudo aborts and uh, they say there's something inconsistent. So, yeah, what is required is we just, when updating or doing package updates for the offline uh, root file system directory, we just have to reuse the same pseudo information that the extract script shown before already used. So th they basically just said pseudo local state here and add a prefix and then I can do, for example, an OPK OPKG install on the directory. And I also require a number of native tools for this. Okay, of course, yeah, sudo I just talked about, but when doing package updates, I need the package manager uh, software. So for OPKG, I need OPKG and OPKG make index for RPM. I need create, create, R, create repo C and um, some generic tools are also required for the post install scripts that are in the packages, for example, update alternative and pre-conf. So the tool that is to be developed first needs to add these to the recipe system. We have these add to recipe this root task um, that the OE run native uh, script also uses, which just adds the package to its own native this root. And then I can add this to the parse. Yeah, and I just use this to set up a full parse with a number of native tools built by Bitbake that I need uh, to generate the root file system for. So the first approach we developed at Pangotronics we called Carabina. Does not have any meanings just uh, because uh, the person that started this is uh, Ruven and he likes to climb, so he took the name Carabina. It's a Python tool and it's a fully external tool. It's uh, not uh, yet coupled with uh, Bitbag in any way. It just uses the Tinfall APA which is the uh, yeah, standard API for external tools in Bitbake that allows to pass recipes, uh, get some of the data store data and build recipes. And this required to manually uh, trigger the package index generation. Then we had an iNotify file watch on the package index. And every time the package index was updated, um, then this tool started um, and updated the root file system via offline updates with a custom uh, OPKG, OPKG wrapper script, pseudo information, and so on. This basically worked, but yeah, it has some limitations. It's not well coupled. The I notify file what is not the nicest thing. It was not uh, quite quick in generating things. And uh, yeah, it's also required to manually generate the package index. So this was the state when I submitted the talk and then I decided, okay, um, we've learned some things and can't we do it better? So the second approach now is to more or less integrate it into Yocto or at least have it as a script um, in the scripts directory of uh, the POCO repository. What is also changed now is how uh, the triggering of the update server happens. So we have now a class that can hook into Bitbag directly, and then we can connect to the Bitbag event handling and can just wait for the build completed event. And once the build completed event is emitted, I, uh, I connect uh, to uh, Unix or via a Unix domain socket to the server uh, that handles the update and can notify it uh, yeah, via this mechanism. And now I've also built the package index generation into the tool that updates the root file system because it's yeah more or less, the, the recipe itself more or less does not do much more than importing the generate index files uh, utility helper and invokes it. 
So this is something we can also do from inside the tool. And then to not be limited to OPKT, what the tool before was, we use the BitBake package manager management abstraction that we already have. Um, one missing part, there are some small parts missing um, to make it really usable, but the most important thing missing was, of course, the upgrade method, because, yeah, in a normal Yocto build, you don't need an upgrade. You just build the root file system once. So, yeah, this is just the uh, help output of the tool. So what you do is you call NFS export updater, then you have to specify the root file system recipe or the name of the recipe, like core image base, which is just for that we know which image to parse to know the uh, image install list or what images we have to install from the high level. And uh, yeah, you then let it point to the export directory that you exported with the scripts you have used before. The above uh, GitHub link is uh, just a link to the Pocky repository uh, forks there with, I think, currently two patches added for implementing the tool that I describe here. So if you want to try it out, just clone uh, this GitHub repository and then go for it. Um, short look into the class. As I've said, we have uh, hooked into the BitBake event handling here. So we add a handler um, that is triggered on the build complete signal. And it's a bit shortened, but what it does is, is it connects to uh, the server via this uh, Unix domain socket and just emits some sort of message. It's quite simple here uh, now as a prototype. Ju just says BitBake done. And this way it notifies our server tool uh, that it now should update the package index and then install the, uh, or get the uh, update from the package feed, like package manager update. And then it should install the updated packages to our offline root file system that we use for NFS root. And it has some features hard coded enabled now. So package management, as I said before, that's needed and it has uh, a default for the PR server to be enabled. So this is basically all that the class does. And if we now look at the whole uh, run of commands that is required, so from our local conf, we just need to inherit uh, the NFS root class. Then we do bit by core image base to create our initial tar archive. Then we run run QMA extract SD car to create the pseudo-enabled NFS root directory. Then we run the exporter script, run QEMO, uh, not directly here, but via a run QEMO call. So this is basically the, sc the script I uh, described before is indirectly called when I run QEMO with a directory appended. And yeah, then it starts an NFS user space server under pseudo. And then I start the tool we've developed here, the NFS export updater, say, okay, core image base is the image you have to look at, and this is the export here. And then I can do exactly what I wanted in the beginning. I can modify BusyBox, I can bit back BusyBox. Once the build is done, the server gets notified, updates the package feed, updates the offline updates. And yeah, since I have an NFS root mount, I can look into the target uh, diator and can modify it from the host environment. So what is supported, what is not supported? Installing new packages is supported. As I said, I specify the image we talk about. So if I said core image space and do an image install append, then a reparsing would say, okay, there's this new package list compared to the old list and I have to install these new packages. Upgrading packages with dependencies is uh, possible by the normal uh, package manager upgrade step. Removing packages is not yet implemented, but it should not be that tricky. The currently supported package format is EPK, EPKG only, but there's a uh, first code for RPM existing. And yeah, as I use the general abstraction, uh, depth should also be possible. And an additional thing uh, that was a uh, question from our developers is that I write a, a timestamp uh, file. So each time the server updates the NFS root export, then it updates a uh, timestamp file so that the developer on the target knows when 
the tar when the root file system of the target was last updated by our exporter. Um, copying files to the target is not that trivial when using sudo because I can't, as I said before, just copy it from an outer environment. I again need to use a pseudo environment so that it can keep track of the inodes that changes. So I created a small uh, wrapper script for this which is called nfsvp. It's the latest commit on the uh, GitHub repository and this just does a CP but with the pseudo environment around it. And yeah, one of the next steps is then finding a way how to edit files. I can read files but I can't not edit, I can't uh, start an editor. So a possible solution to this is uh, do some sort of NFS mount on your root host too or do some pseudo fuse enabled mount. So I think there are options but it's not yet uh, implemented. And yeah, then once it is in a state that is halfway stable, I think it's, uh, yeah, would be the question if it's something that other are also interested in, which would help others developing on software and if we submit it as a patch to OE core. And yeah, just some general limitations when using NFS root. Um, the image post processing normally done by, uh, by Yocto can't be invoked there because yeah, it's expected to happen after all packages are installed and if I just install all packages, invoke this and then install or reinstall a package, it's not defined how it behaves when I do the root FS post processing after this because this is something we left out. And as it is an NFS root, you can't do real network testing. You can't reconfigure your network interface where you are just connected to your host, uh, of course. So this is not possible. There are currently alternatives developed at Pangotronics for using a 9P file system over a USB with a daemon. Um, then you would just use USB and can use it with uh, an NFS root exporter tool or a gener generic exporter tool like Ganesha or something like this, but this is yeah currently under development. So yeah, I think I made it halfway in time. So yeah, thank you very much for listening and if you have any questions or share your experience how you develop uh, under Yocto, then feel free to share. <laughs>